Okay, Algebra 1. We've got Chapter 5, Section 2. This is substitution. And so remember substitution, we have to have things that are equal to each other. So let me start with these equations. Let me start with x plus 4y equals 6. And then I'm going to go to x minus y equals 1. So our goal here is to get one variable by itself. So either that to be x equals something or y equals something. So I want to take a look at my variables. I notice that my x's are, whoop, are crossed out according to that. There we go. My x's are all by themselves. That y has a 4 attached to it. This y has a negative attached to it. Now this one works out easy because it's the the first one, and I usually put the easiest problem first. And so let's take a look at um, getting each of those uh, with x by itself. So if I want to get x by itself in the first one, I'm going to subtract 4y to the other side. And so now I have x equals 6 minus 4y. And then over here, I'm going to add y to both sides. So that gives me x equals 1 plus y. Now, if x is equal to itself, <clears throat> excuse me, then that means that these two things have to be equal to each other because they both equal x, which is the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 6 minus 4y. And I'm going to set it equal to 1 plus y. Again, because they equal x, they have to equal each other. And now I'm just going to solve for y. So lots of different things we could do here. Um, let's go ahead and take smallest to biggest. So I'm going to take this negative 4y to the other side by adding it. That gives me 6 equals 1 plus, and we have y plus 4y. Uh, remember, put a 1 there if you want to. So 1y plus 4y gives me 5y. And then one more step. I'm sorry, it should be two more steps. So I end up with 5 equals 5y. If I want to get y by itself, divide both sides by 5. So y equals 1. And so in our coordinate, remember, we're going to have an x value and a y value in our solution. So we have found the y value in our solution, and that is 1. Now the question is, how do I find my x value? Well, I go all the way back to the original equation, and I pick one of them. doesn't matter. And so I'm just going to pick the first one, x plus 4y equals 6. x plus 4y equals 6. And since I know what my y value is, now I sub it in. So x plus 4 times 1 equals 6. That's x plus 4 equals 6. And then how am I going to solve that one? To get that plus 4 to the other side, I'm going to subtract it. And that gives me an x value of 2. So now our answer is 2, 1. x value of 2, y value of 1. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at one more. I'm going to put a couple of examples on there for you. Let's go with 2x plus 3y equals 4. and y plus 3x equals 6. Okay, so I chose this one because um, they're not always going to, to end up great. And so um, 
I'm going to choose X's and I'll show you why here in just a minute. Let's solve for X in both of these. So I'm going to subtract 3Y and that gives me 2X equals 4 minus 3Y. I have to divide both sides by 2 and that gives me X equals, let's look at both of these separate, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And negative 3y divided by 2 is just negative 3y divided by 2. I can't do anything there. So let's go over here to the right one. And I'm going to subtract 1 from 1y from both sides. So that gives me 3x equals 6 minus y minus y. There we go. Divide both sides by 3. 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. And negative y, we'll call that negative 1y, divided by 3 is negative 1 third y. Now, as crazy as this seems, okay, we're going to have a couple of fractions, and that's okay. And I'm going to change the look of this one just a little bit, just so it looks the same as the other one. I'm going to change it to negative 1y over 3. So now I've got two values of x. Get that out of the way. So I set them equal to each other. 2 minus 3y over 2 equals 2 minus 1y over 3. Now what's going to happen with these 2s? Because I have the exact same thing on both sides. We did this a long time ago. So we're thinking back. If I have the same thing on both sides, I can actually just cancel them. And I have negative 3y over 2 equals negative 1y over 3. So we do have to get the y's together. You're going to see a little magic here in just a minute. Um, let's go ahead and give them common denominators. So I'm going to have a common denominator of 6. So on the left side, I multiply top and bottom by 3. So that's negative 9y over 6. And on the other side, I multiply top and bottom by 2. So that's negative 2y over 6. And so the smaller one is going to be the negative 9y. So I'm going to add 9y over 6. And we're going to do a lot of work here for not much result. That's a math joke. Some of you will get that here in just a second. <clears throat> nope. So negative 9y over 6 plus 9y over 6, that actually cancels and ends up being 0. Because anytime you add something to its negative, it's 0. Negative 2y over 6 plus 9y over 6 gives me 7y over 6. OK. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by 6. Some of you are probably seeing what's going to happen here. That gives me 7y equals 0. Divide by 7. y actually equals 0. So that's why I said we're doing a lot of work for not much result. <laughs> I know that's a horrible math joke, but we're going to go with it. So again, I know I have to have an x and a y. So in this case, my y is 0, which will make it very easy because I go back up to um, either of those. Again, I'll pick the first one. 2x plus 3y equals 4. And everywhere I see a y, I'm going to replace it with a 0. So that cancels that, giving me 2x equals 4. Divide both sides by 2, and x equals 2. Now remember to be on the lookout. Um, if you can put a couple of them in y equals, m <clears throat> y equals mx plus b form, and they have the same slope, then those will be parallel, and there will be no solution, because they will not intersect. That's a little bit under 10 minutes. Chapter 5, Section 2, Systems Substitution.